A convicted killer released early from prison only to commit another violent crime. Had he stayed behind bars in Illinois, this would have never have happened to a Gulf Coast woman beaten within inches of her life. Tonight, News 5's Katerina Lukatic investigates who is making these potentially dangerous parole decisions and could it happen here. A warning, some of the images in this story may be considered graphic to some. I was begging him to, to stop. He said, you know, when it's your day to die, it's just your day to die. But Dawn Franklin didn't die, something she calls a miracle. What she looks like today, very different from what she looked like in 2012 when her then-boyfriend, David Adelaide, nearly killed her in Loosedale, Mississippi. He was behind me, standing over me, choking me. In the back bedroom of their home, Adelaide beat her for more than an hour. At one point, Adelaide stopped to wash his hands covered in her blood. In that moment, she reached for her phone. I had sent, sent Mr. Donnie a text, and I said, uh, call 911. Um, he's going to kill me. Her neighbor Donnie and his wife rushed over, rescued her, and took her down the street to wait for police. But it wasn't until Adelaide was behind bars that Dawn learned this didn't have to happen to her. I didn't know the truth about his past. I didn't know what he had done. Adelaide is a convicted murderer. In 1992, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison for killing a woman, strangling and beating her with his bare hands in Illinois. He was granted parole after serving just half of his sentence. I think the first thing that went through our mind is how does this happen? District Attorney Tony Lawrence, who prosecuted Dawn's case in Mississippi, was outraged when he discovered Adelaide's past. So he fought for the toughest sentence against Adelaide for the assault. In Dawn's case, it wasn't a murder, thank God. Um, not for lack of trying. But, you know, what she went through, we felt like deserved a, a harsh and a strong punishment, and that's why he got a life sentence. The case, though, raises questions about the parole board. How did they let such a dangerous man back on the streets? In Illinois, a 12-member parole board released Adelaide on good behavior. News 5 investigated and learned parole boards vary from state to state. If the original crime had happened in Mississippi, Adelaide would have never gone before a parole board. Decisions on parole for convicted killers are left up to a judge and only after the killer turns 65. In Alabama, a three-member board rules on all pardons and paroles for every criminal in the state. Murderers are eligible for parole after serving 85% of their sentence or 15 years, whichever is less. Florida is phasing out paroles altogether, but right now when it comes to convicted killers, a three-member panel hears cases that happened before May 1994. Anyone who committed a murder after that is not eligible for parole. Back in Mississippi, Dawn says for the people still making these decisions, their purpose should be simple. To them, it might be another day at work. They're making decisions based on this or that, but these are people's lives that they hold in their hands. In 2016, 24 inmates were paroled in Florida, 11 of them convicted murderers. Requests for this information from Mississippi and Alabama went unanswered. For a more in-depth look at who sits on parole boards on the Gulf Coast, including how much money they make, look for this story on our website, WKRG.com.